पुलिस इस वक्त मौजूद हैं और उनको ब्रीफिंग दी जा रही है and continue to develop at the cost of the environment a cost that we are paying uh, mr secretary general in the next 10 minutes i'll try and run you through very quickly as to the scale of the devastation and in the end i'll make an appeal to you uh, sir uh, i do not have a powerpoint pre presentation but i'll just explain what the situation is with the help of this map of the province of sindh uh, 30 districts in the province and uh, on the north we've got balochistan and the punjab province north in the western side we've got balochistan and on the south we've got the arabian ocean in the east we have got uh, india the river indus the blue line that you see here divides the province in two halves and Uh, normally we face floods through river indus but this time round and that as has been the case for the last two floods in 2022 sorry in 2020 and in 2011 uh, we've had huge monsoon rains which were never here before and i'll just give you an idea of how much it has rained here um, this left bank of indus which you will not visit today you're going to the right bank and i'll talk about that also the district of noshero firoz there is a small town called patidan the normal rain in patidan is 86 mm in the month of july and august this this town faced 1763 mm that's almost 2000 times more 20 uh, 2000% more i'm sorry 20 times more. the entire left bank had rains of this kind Today, sir, you'd be flying your right now in Sakhar, where the Sakhar barrage is. From here, you'd be flying uh, via Sakhar, Larka, and Jakabad into Usta Muhammad. In Jakabad, we had we normally have 62 millimeters of rain in these two months. This year, in the months of July and August, we've had 783 millimeters of rain. almost 1300% more after going to balochistan you'll come to larkano monjedaro the monjedaro airport normally the normal rain is 60 mm this year we've experienced 990 mm in monjedaro that is 16.5 times more 1650% on an average in the entire province we've had 1100% more rain 11 times more rain than normal in such a catastrophe you know it is very difficult to sustain i'll just very briefly tell you about the past floods that we've had i as a young boy remember the 1976 which was a riverine flood uh, due to breaches on the right bank of river indus and i remember the destruction at that time more recently we had the 2010 floods uh, which was a breach right here in the indus river on the right side and this entire right pocket was flooded till uh, this lake manchur lake and i saw you asking a question about manchur and i'll tell you very briefly about it this entire right bank was flooded but only four to five districts suffered and apart from these four to five district there was a little problem there was a breach in thatta district towards the left side of indus river and sijawal district so about six districts were affected in 19 in 2010 in 2011 we had the monsoon floods and they hit the left bank the right bank was there was no issue with the right bank and six about six districts of the left bank were affected in 2011 similarly 2020 Uh, mostly the floods was on the left bank and six districts were affected due to monsoon we had a little problem in kambar shadab port because of the uh, rains in the kirthar range and the water did come into part of kambar shadab port district in 2020 uh, but uh, mr secretary general 2022 is beyond belief 
24 districts have been hit. There's water in 24 districts of the province, out of a total of 30. The six districts of Karachi, which we have not declared as calamity hit, also experienced, and I'll just tell you uh, the numbers for Karachi, uh, the normal rain in Karachi is 180 millimeters. And this year, we got 1185 millimeters, so almost 11 times the rain in Karachi also. Uh, the Karachi infrastructure is in shambles because of the plane. We were, uh, you know, uh, we managed to take out the flood water in six of the seven districts. One district which is more rural of uh, nature is we still have water in the district of Malir. Uh, the loss, almost 600 people have died. We have a count of 590 till now, uh, but almost, you know, I'd, I'd say this will uh, be even higher. Almost 10,000 people injured, and most of these, both the deaths and the injuries, are children. We estimate that about 12 million people, we have a population of uh, more than 50 million in the province of Sen, we uh, estimate that at least 12 million people have been displaced from their houses, or they're stranded, even if they're in their houses, they're totally stranded, they are in islands. In terms of loss of property, we've got 3 million, as per the 2017 census, we had 3 million kacha or adobe, adobe houses. And these could not withstand the rain that fell from the skies. We fear that all these 3 million houses have been damaged beyond repair. Even if they're standing, they're not good to live in, because if somebody goes and lives in that house now, they would definitely suffer. Livestock, we have a large livestock uh, population in the province. We fear we don't have a complete count now because of the water. We are right now in the rescue and relief stage, but we fear that not less than 500,000 kettle heads. Crop damage, we've got a little more idea because through satellite imagery and all, uh, we estimate that three and a half million acres of land has been inundated or farmland has gone under water. Our entire cotton crop, which is on almost 1.5 million acres, is gone. We estimate the cost of this uh, to be about 2.5 billion. Uh, the, you must have seen the trees while you were landing at the Sakkar Airport. Uh, our Khairpur district and Sakkar district are famous for dates. The entire dates crop has gone. Uh, and so are the crops. We estimate about three and rice. Rice. Seventy-five uh, percent of the rice is gone. About thirty percent of sugarcane is gone. The total estimate that we have currently is about three hundred and fifty billion uh, worth of crop damage. So, in terms of damages, as I said, three and fifty billion rupees of crop damage. The houses, the three million houses that have gone. If you put a very conservative number of uh, 300,000 rupees per house, 900 billion rupees. The cattle, uh, the estimate of 500,000, at 100,000 rupees at, uh, uh, per, per, per uh, head per animal, it's 50 billion rupees. Uh, so these are the losses of the personal losses to people. Uh, what uh, we want immediately right now, I'll just go straight to what we need. Secretary, uh, when you go out, you'll see people are living under this scorching heat. Now, first they were hit by rains. Even today, we've got a forecast in the southeastern districts in Parker and Badin. We've got forecast of rain today. Omar Court. Uh, first, they were under these torrential rains. Now they are in this scorching sun. We've tried to arrange tents. We've tapped every source in the in the country. Uh, we've got some relief from our friendly countries. The civil administration, the provincial government, the federal government, the armed forces, all of us are working together. But we still need for the current uh, about one and a half million more tents or tarpaulin sheets because we use them as tents for shelter. Mosquito nets. We've tried, uh, the Prime Minister was kind enough, we promised 1.5 million tents and uh, uh, the NDMA is distributed. And we've sourced another almost uh, 2 million tents of our own. But despite that, right now we're short of 2 million, mos sorry, mosquito nets. Uh, we're short of 2 million mosquito nets. 
the animals are be are dying because of uh, mosquito bites. We need at least a million animal mosquito nets. Rations we are arranging ourselves. World Food Program has helped us tremendously. I remember the 2010 flood and the relief that came in from the World Food Program was uh, commendable. We need similar efforts uh, this year. And lastly, current needs medicines. Uh, you know, uh, we've exhausted our supplies here in the province. Our friendly countries are uh, sending us some medicines. But we need medicines for malaria. We need medicines for uh, diarrhea. We need medicines for skin disease that have come up. Um, apart from that, what you know, we have to come out of this. We are fighting this. We have to be resilient. We, in the province of Sindh, have set ourselves a two-month target. We want majority of this water evacuated within two months. It's going to be a very difficult task, but we are resolute that we are going to do it. Not 100% of the water, but our target is to get 75% of the water. And the, I'll just very quickly tell you how the water uh, would go. On the right bank, starting from Peshmoor, all these districts, the water comes down to this small blue dot that you see here, which is the Manchur Lake, which right now is about 10 times its normal size. It's gone up to, uh, on the uh, southern side, uh, there are hills. So we've actually sent water to the hills also this time. Uh, this water uh, has inundated this entire Sevan Tessil after breaches of, you know, man-made, we cut the Manchur uh, Lake ourselves, and now the water is going into the Indus, but the water coming in is still more than water going out into the river. We are hoping that the river um, levels will be more favorable in a few days and more water will be evacuated. So uh, all this water will go out from the Manchur Lake into River Indus and then uh, to the sea. On the uh, left bank of Indus, the uh, districts close to the, next to the river, there are river escapes of canals. So we are going to use them to pump water into these escapes and then flow these water uh, this uh, wa uh, water from the escapes into the river. But the other districts which are away, you know, starting from uh, uh, the eastern side of Khairpur, the eastern side of Nawabsha, the districts of Sangar, Umarkot, Mipurkhas, uh, uh, you know, all of these would evacuate water through Badin into the sea. And uh, uh, that's the only way the water would go out. So we are trying our best to evacuate this water and our target is to get 75% of the water out within two months so that we can at least try to sow the rub crop, the wheat crop uh, in the province. If you are not able to do that, the farmers who have lost 350 billion rupees will lose another crop. But that sowing will be delayed in any case? Sowing will be delayed but we will have late varieties and try and... Uh, so uh, when the water recedes, all the people displaced will go back to their houses immediately. They won't wait for the government uh, to provide facilities because they want to earn their living, they want to sow their uh, land for the next crop. And we will need again a large quantity of shelters, of tents, of tarpals, of some kind of temporary shelters. And this target that we've set ourselves is two months. And we estimate about three million more tents that we're going to need, or shelters, if I may. Uh, for, for the short term, just, just this two months. Uh, we need to support these farmers. Farmers in the province, or in Pakistan generally, and in the province of Sindh uh, particularly, live from crop to crop. We take credit <coughs> for our inputs, and we pay the creditors uh, when we so, uh, reap the crop. And we don't have anything to pay back the creditors. We don't have any money. Uh, the creditors would not give us more money. Even they are out of money. So we need to provide them support and we feel that and we need to provide them support for seed, we need to provide them support for fertilizer, we need to provide them support for tilling the land, to, to provide them fuel for their tractors if they have any remaining. And the estimate there is about 50 billion rupees would go, have to go immediately to the farming community just to sow the uh, rabi crop. Livestock support, the other source of income uh, of uh, the rural people is livestock. And uh, though the damage is much larger, but we feel that immediately we need to 
import livestock from areas, from countries which have similar, similar climates or similar breeds so that we can give to these livestock farmers and uh, another 20 billion is required. Our irrigation network is devastated. The estimate for revival of the irrigation uh, network, and this is a very preliminary estimate, is 195 billion rupees. We need to spend 20, 30 billion rupees in the next two months to revive the system to at least be able to sow the rubby crop, just to that level. It's not a complete uh, rehabilitation. Just put it on a ventilator so that it survives and uh, is able to give water to the rubby crop. Similarly, the road network, uh, the total amounts are much larger, but we need to spend about 15 billion rupees in the next two months to make the roads motorable. Uh, right now, you cannot go from Sakhar to Karachi. There's only one route, and uh, the normal driving time is about six to seven hours. It may take you up to 24 hours right now to get to Karachi by taking some detours, and uh, you probably need a 4x4 four four vehicle. You would not be able to go in a small car. The government building, especially the schools and hospitals that have been damaged, we need to restore them immediately. And uh, we estimate a num uh, an amount of about 5 billion rupees for that immediately. Karachi, I told you, it, though it does not have water, when you go there in the evening, Mr. Uh, Secretary, tonight you won't see water in Karachi. But it had 11 times of the normal rate. The infrastructure is, and you would probably see that, uh, is completely uh, you know, damaged. And uh, we would need, right now, in order to revive the infrastructure, and again, this two-month target, about 10 billion rupees. Uh, then we have a medium-term target for one year. We need to make houses for these people. Again, at a cost of 300,000 rupees per house, we are estimating 900 billion rupees to make these houses. And they need a support. The provincial government, the federal government, and uh, we're requesting the international agencies will have to come for the support. This is not their doing, they're suffering because of others. As I said, irrigation network, uh, we ex uh, expect to spend another 165 billion rupees just to revive it to where it was on the 1st of July, 2022. Uh, the road networks to revive it again, to bring it to where it was on the 1st of July, uh, 2022, uh, we need 45 billion, another 50, 10 billion for government buildings, and the Karachi infrastructure, 10 billion we need immediately, and another 60 billion we estimate in the next year to make it livable, if I may. Uh, and, you know, I'll just try and end quickly. Ultimately, we need to upgrade our irrigation and drainage infrastructure. We cannot withstand these, you know, these, uh, we were, you know, we were not built for. 10 times the rain. I don't think we'd be able to uh, build the infrastructure for 10 times the rain, but at least we can endeavor to drain out the water quicker than what it takes now. In my, you know, this is a very rough estimate. We need a trillion rupees to upgrade the irrigation infrastructure. Raise the dikes. The flood protection bund which protects us from the hill torrents was preached at five or six places. And we raised it after 2010 by five feet, or six feet. But it breached at six places. So we need to strengthen that. The river dikes need to be strengthened. We, this year, we did not have, we had just a, a, a heavy flood, not a super flood. Uh, we had 600,000 Q6 at Guddu Baraj, roughly. Uh, we experienced up to 1.1 million Q6. The average flow at Guddu Baraj is about 400,000 Q6. The way the environment, the way the nature is hitting back at us, if we get 10 times the rains, uh, sorry, 10 times the flows in the river, that's about 4 million Q6 of water. Now, I'm, I hope, you know, that that be doomsday. But, uh, you know, this is what the nature is doing. And it's doing because of no fault of ours. And lastly, the urban infrastructure, we uh, feel that the cities of Karachi, Hyderabad, Sakhar, in order that we prepare and do proper drainage works there, uh, another trillion rupees are required. In terms of US dollars, this entire plan uh, would be about 16 billion US dollars, is what we estimate. Uh, you, uh, when you fly towards Dekabhabad and then go to Balochistan and come back to Mohenjo-daro, you'll see part of the disaster. 
uh, you'll see water has receded because uh, you're going towards the northernmost districts of the province. The water is receding from here and going southwards. There was more water here about a week back. Uh, as you go down, you'll see you know lots more water contribution to the problem. We add as you and I know I'm preaching to the choir here. I've heard you yesterday. We add negligible amount to world's greenhouse gas emissions, yet we bear the brunt of the devastating effects. It's only fair that we look to the world in the wake of the disaster that has befallen us. While I humbly phrase this as an appeal, it is in fact what we are owed by the developed world. Pakistan needs help. This battle cannot be ours alone. We look towards you, Mr. Secretary General, to help bring the world to us. Today, we look to you to help us to provide relief. Tomorrow, we need to rebuild. We look towards you to help us build structures that adapt to this climate change. We hope to build homes that allow the residents to live without fear of being washed away, an infrastructure that can withstand the fury of melting glaciers, torrential rains, and raging rivers. We also look to the world for helping in constructing drainage capable of handling such unprecedented amount of water as we are seeing today. We need to make international laws that restrict and prohibit developed countries from pursuing policies which result in catastrophic consequences for the less developed. We need to promote a green agenda and a resilient policy. We look towards you, Mr. Secretary General, and the rest of the United Nations to ensure that no other country suffers the way Pakistan is suffering today. Thank you very much. I guess we, uh, I don't know if you want to say a few words or we just move to the helicopter? Sure. Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Chief Minister, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. It is difficult uh, not to feel deeply moved when we hear such a detailed description of tragedy, of the loss of life, of the destruction, of the loss of property, of the loss of livelihoods. But uh, listening to you, I see that there is no loss of hope. But that hope to materialize needs the international community to recognize serious, needs the international community to recognize three basic facts. First, as you said, humanity has been waging war on nature, and nature strikes back. But uh, nature strikes back in sin, but it was not sin that has made the emissions of greenhouse gases that have accelerated climate change so dramatically. So there is a very unfair situation in relation to the level of destruction that we are seeing here in Sint. And so it is essential for the international community to understand three things. And obviously, developed countries have an absolutely key role to play in the international financial institutions joining them. First is that Pakistan, including Sint, needs today massive financial support to overcome this crisis. And I've been saying, and you repeated it, this is not a matter of generosity, it's a matter of justice. Second, we need to stop the madness with which we are treating nature. According to uh, the scientific community, 
We need to reduce emissions by 45% until 2030. I'm not talking about the end of the century. I'm not talking about 2050. I'm talking about now. Now is the time to reduce emissions. And this will be essential in the discussions in Cairo of the COP. But uh, the fact is that we are already living in a world where climate change is acting in such a devastating way. So there must be massive support to what usually is called adaptation, which means to build resilient infrastructure and to support resilient communities and to create conditions for those that are in the hot spots of climate change. And Pakistan is one of the 15 hot spots of climate change. Uh, for those countries to be able to prepare for the next disaster and to be able to resist the next disaster. And this needs a huge investment, and this investment needs to be provided. That's why we are asking for a, a strong increase in the financing of adaptation, of resilient infrastructure. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, there has not yet until now been a serious discussion about conditions for a serious discussion on loss and damage. And then I would like to say that what the UN is doing in Pakistan is a drop in the ocean of what is needed. We are perfectly aware of how limited is our capacity and our resources. But one thing you can be absolutely sure, we are in total solidarity with the Pakistani people. We will do everything we can, not only to use our limited capacities, but to raise awareness and to request those that have the capacity to support Pakistan, to request that they do it. They do it now, they do it massively, and they do it also looking into the preparation of this country to face future challenges to be able to protect their population when those future challenges are coming. Our commitment, our very strong and emotional solidarity is something you can count on. Thank you very much. Thank you. اقوام متحدہ کے سیکرٹری جنرل انتونیو گوئترس موجود تھے وزیر اعظم شہباز شریف موجود تھے انہیں سلاب کے